Hi, I'm Alicia Toot from A Music Blog Yeah, and I'm delighted to say that I'm sitting here with the lovely Kate Nash. How are you doing today, Kate? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so you're currently on a North American tour. So how's that going for you so far? It's going really well, yeah. Um, we've had a lot of fun so far. Um, we're on tour with La Sera, um, and they have a dog called Bo, who couldn't make it to Canada, so he's staying in a dog hotel for like one night. Um, but <clears throat> everyone's really nice and we're having a really fun show so it's only really the beginning we've got quite a lot to go so it's good and what have been some of the highlights of the tour so far oh um cleveland was amazing i didn't know what to expect from cleveland and we played in this really cool venue called beachland ballroom and everyone was really nice and they had made amazing food for us and they had like a record store and a vintage shop like in the <clears throat> in the venue which was dangerous um the crowd are great, and Minneapolis playing First Avenue, uh, Milwaukee, everyone's so friendly there, like, Chicago was crazy, like, I don't know, we've had, like, really good shows everywhere, but I've had a really good time so far. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> uh, one thing that we really wanted to ask you about is tour essentials. What are some things that you cannot live without while touring? Mm. Okay, that's, um, so, like, skin, skin care, because it's, like, quite dirty like really grimy it's not it's not glamorous like touring because you're always like I don't know sweating after shows and living in a bus and showering in weird horrible showers and trying to look after your skin's really hard um <clears throat> I think nowadays I guess like you know phones and computers are needing wi-fi and internet and stuff and um recommendations of like good places to eat eating healthy food is it really important and then, like, um, I think the people that you have around you, though, are the most important because you need, like, positive people because um, touring can be grueling and you get tired and homesick, but if you're with a good group of people, then you can always, like, have fun and support each other through stuff. So, um, And I can't go anywhere without, like, you know, my lipstick and fishnet tights and my creepers and... Um, and making and slippers I've started to bring slippers now so that I can like walk around in hotels and feel comfortable and on the bus and stuff so <laughs> all right and then I have one last touring question for you is how would you compare North American audiences to the European ones oh um, I guess like audiences worldwide are totally different I think I don't know because every country is, is is sort of different and America's so big that like a lot of the time like you know, each each city is has a different kind of atmosphere. Um, but Americans, have, like North America, has been very like embracing and welcoming and like vocal. They're quite vocal. I feel like you know they like shout stuff out, and I like I like that. I think that's cool. <laughs> so now I just want to talk about my favorite part, the music. <laughs> you released Girl Talk earlier in the year. So what are your thoughts on the record now that there's been a few months to reflect on it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just like really proud of the album it's like my I feel like my my best work and it's been really fun playing it live and it's sort of I think this record is is made me grow a lot as an artist I think it was like a it's like a whole new it's it's, it's opened up like a whole new like um chapter in my in my career I think because I got dropped from my other label I put it out um on my own record label and then out in Canada, I put it out on Dynalone Records, so it's like in, an independent record, which is really cool. And um, yeah, I think it's been a challenging, interesting, and exciting part of my career. Right, and with Girl Talk, was actually released back in March, and something that a lot of people were talking about was the fact that you changed your image. I didn't see a big, uh, like a massive change in it, but there, you could notice it, it a tad, especially with the hair and everything. I yeah. hear you, I've seen you uh, talk about in interviews. So, do you believe that you're like? I find you have a very rad and like uh, vintage look. Do you find that has an impact on the new material? Um, I think like image is a big part, I guess, of a musician. Sort of like, even if you don't consider yourself to like have an image, or but, like everyone has a has a look, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now, probably like more than ever, there's like. I would think about it more now because this, you're so overexposed, you know, like with Instagram and like the internet, everyone like takes videos of shows and like pictures of you doing gigs and stuff. And so you're always like thinking about how you look more, which can be bad and good. Um, but I think like it's just something that can really help you feel more confident 
you know, if you have a strong image. And this look for me was like all about confidence and survival. Like I went through a traumatic time in my personal life and um, I latched onto Ladies and Gentlemen, The Fabulous Stains, which, which is a really great movie. And the lead character, I dyed my hair exactly like hers. And then I just felt like I needed like a strong look to feel strong. So that's kind of what I went for. How do you feel you've evolved as a songwriter from the release of your debut record? I think a lot. I think I have evolved quite a lot. Um, I don't know, though. I think musically, like, I know how to make things sound like how I want them to sound. Like, I have more, so much more experience with playing live music for seven years and recording in and out of studios for seven years. You just, like, you learn a lot. And so I know... And I produced a record as well for a band. So I think that really that really helped me like just develop a new set of skills like when it came to like writing music and and also just being more confident and being brave and not like caring less what people think like just means that I'm not too worried about if someone would think that what I was doing was stupid because I'm just like enjoying it so I think that makes you develop too and you recently released a new video for a friend is that how it's pronounced or is it Separate, because I know the spelling. It is. I just felt it like that to confuse people, really. I, 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 just felt like, <laughs> I just felt it like that when I was a kid, and I don't know, I just wrote it like, out like that, and it sort of stuck. Okay. But it's, it's just friend, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you released the new video for Friend, I believe it was a week and a half ago. So for that video, it's very colorful, vibrant. What was the inspiration behind the video? Um, it was like my friend, like Ryan Baxley, who directed it, sort of came up with the idea for the video. Um, he's very creative, and... Um, just wanted like a performance style video that had a strong look, you know, a strong color palette and just because he saw my live show and he was like, it should be kind of like feel as fun as like when you're playing live and stuff. So we just went for like a vintagey kind of color palette performance video, which was really fun. He's yeah. really talented. He's a great editor too. No, it looks amazing. I love all the different colors and the different lipsticks. It was just, it was perfect. <laughs> so one thing that I really wanted to bring up is um, a lot of the bands that we feature are up and coming and they've noted you as an inspiration. So do you happen to have any advice for them who are just getting into the music industry? So cool. Um, yeah, I think like always trust your gut instincts and I think you should constantly be like questioning everything. Um, and expect like it's almost like if you're prepared for things to go you should be prepared for things to go wrong because they will because it's like a very um, it's not a it's not a secure industry and so there'll be a lot of challenges so if you're not too overwhelmed by that that's a good thing you know like just if something goes wrong like don't worry it's not the end of the world um, and a lot of people will tell you like that things are the end of the world. And it's like, you have to do this, otherwise everyone's gonna die. And it's not true, there'll, there'll always be other opportunities. And I think you just have to have like a really, really massive belief in what you're doing in yourself. And because people again will like come in and out of your career and support you or not support you. And um, I think that you just have to like stick to your guns and be determined and play shows and build a, um, a relationship with your fans because that is ultimately the, the most important thing like you can't always rely on like radio or labels or whatever things that might have helped you before or you know you think that you might need to have a career it's like there are a lot of bands out there that just have a really large um, fan base and that's the reason they can tour and put out albums and I think that especially now with the internet it just is is a step like even closer to your fans and it's a really easy way to like monitor to the things like Kickstarter and Pledge Music and having like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. It's just a way of becoming interactive with your fans and, and keeping them updated and, and getting making them feel part of what you're doing too. Well, thank you for sharing those tips with us and our readers. Um, so there's just the other thing I want to bring up regarding indie bands is I've noticed on your Facebook and Twitter and all your socials, you actually post out some recommendations. So who have you been listening to lately? Oh, um, Skating Polly is like my new like favorite band. They're like really awesome. Two girls, um, they're th one's 13, one's 18. Um, they're just so cool, like weird, like grungy, sort of remind me of like, hints of like um, Nirvana and, and Kim Deal and, and Hole and um, 
very, very cool and very inspiring. And they played some shows with us, and they're awesome. And then La Sera, who are also opening for us right now, she, they're like they're so cool. They're like really vibey, like jammy band, like really cool. Um, yeah, they're my two recommendations. Right. <laughs> so now we're at the very last question of the oh, interview. Wait, I have one more. Oh, yeah. Okay, so D Wing, um, who makes like um, very simple like R and B style cool music. I posted. I saw you, I saw you post that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His SoundCloud is like uh, soundcloudcom slash D Wing music, and it's like really catchy R and B stuff. It's really cool. All right, thanks for the third one. So now just the very last question of the interview. What's next for, for you? Well, I'm going to release a Christmas EP. I've just finished recording that, so that's really fun. Um, and then I'm going to go home for Christmas and just chill out for a bit after the tour finishes. And then, um, and then I'm working on a musical um, in New York, which is really exciting. Yeah, it's called Only Gold. Um, and a movie that I was in a shot last year is coming out at the end of the month, too, called Powder Room. So there's some really cool stuff. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, that was the last question of the interview. Once again, I'm Alicia Toot from Music Blog. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. Oh, yeah.